Hi guys, Geraldine Ralph. Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, I have an early childhood program in my home where I care for six little people under the age of five. So today I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite teacher tips for little things that I have, like different kinds of products that I pick up for my early childhood program and things that I use for setting up play provocations. So if you're not aware of what a play provocation is, essentially it is um, setting up activities for children so that they can facilitate gross motor development, fine motor development, um, and work on different kinds of projects. So I have a bunch of things here today that I'm gonna share with you that work really, really, really well in my classroom that help me stay streamlined and organized and um, clean throughout the day. Like I can't stand a lot of clutter in my classroom. Um, I mean, you know, I am working with children, so obviously the kids, you know, take things out and throw it around the classroom. But in general, I like my classroom to be, uh, to have periods of the day where the classroom straightened up before we move on to the next fun and exciting thing. Um, and I will say the wonderful thing about uh, COVID, which I mean, COVID sucks. I don't, I don't I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, COVID's great. Uh, you know, find the silver lining or whatever, you know. Um, I have learned a lot about organizing my classroom in a way that makes it easier for me to clean up at the end of the day because my cleaning schedule is through the roof. I'm sure yours is too, making sure that everything is disinfected and that the children have individualized things so we're not spreading as much, you know, as much cross-contamination with the germs and all of that. But anyways, I have been really working hard to create a system in my classroom that works for making it easy to have activities like that because I'm spending a lot more time in the, in the bathroom helping people wash their hands. Previously, you know, we wash our hands, we wash our hands regularly, but now, I mean, it's like literally every half an hour to an hour, I'm helping all six of the children wash their hands. Also, previously, I would have had my, you know, three to five-year-olds washing their hands on their own because they get, they do a pretty good job. Uh, but now with COVID, I'm just like on top of it. I want to be in there supervising the hand washing, making sure that everybody is super, super clean. And with all of that extra stuff that's going on in our classroom, it's just been a little bit harder to get through our morning and get all of our activities in because I am still running a preschool classroom here and I want my kids to have access to different things. Anyways, I'm done with all that. I am just going to share a few of my favorite products that really help my classroom run nice and smooth and make it so that I have individualized spaces for the kids and different things for them to do. So the first thing I'm gonna show you that's one of my favorite things that I have for my classroom are these awesome Ikea trays. These get, these are really great. We have a light table in our classroom, so I like these because they're translucent. I can set uh, a couple of different things up on this. I can set up a play provocation. I can set up um, some small, we're using a lot of plastic toys right now, some small plastic toys on here and just set it out on the table. And then after, I, well, when I need to disinfect it, I disinfect it, I can just put all of this on the tray, set it off to the side, spritz it down with some bleach water and let it air dry. So these are really great. Also, when we do art activities, even pre-COVID, I love these because they're a nice size for the children to be able to have like their paper and their paint. And then I'm not getting as much paint all over the table and all over the floor. I mean, they are children, so of course they're gonna make messes, but it's really nice because it's got this little lip around it. So any any kind of paint or whatever, or any spilled water is not gonna end up all over the table and all over somebody else's artwork. It just stays right in this nice little tray. So these trays are amazing. Also, when the children are done with their artwork, I use this as a little drying rack, right? Let's say we have a, let's, let's imagine we have a little paint project on here. So we can just grab this other one, stack it this way, stack one this way, you get the idea. So I can stack up all six of these trays, set them off to the side, let the you know mountain of glue and whatever it is that the children put on these dry. So these are really great. I have, I don't know, I have six kids in my program, so I have like 12 of these. I mean, seriously, I could have like a giant stack of these <laughs> and, um, and it would just be great because like I said, I use them for a lot of things in my classroom. Um, I also have, a lot of these different little, oh, actually, oh, this is another thing from Ikea that I'm gonna show you. So these are the little uh, trays that they have for all of, you know, if you look at all the Ikea setups for kids, they have these little trays in varying depths and varying sizes. So this is the uh, medium size one. I'll grab the larger one in a minute. 
um, and one of the smaller ones. So you can see they come in a variety of different sizes. This is really great for making an individualized sensory tray, or in this case, I have some toys out for the kids. Um, usually I like to set, I like my classroom to have more of like the wood and white um, in wherever we can, but with COVID, we're having to bleach a lot of things. But I'm thinking even after COVID, I mean, I have a lot of toddlers and um, toddlers are notorious for licking things, as you know. So, I mean, I always pull any toys that anybody puts in their mouth out and I have a dirty bin that I set off to the side, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but it's nice to have something that, again, I can put this on the shelf, take it off the shelf, spritz it with bleach, put it off on the side. Lately, what I've been doing is I have a little um, eight cube shelf and I will put eight different activities out for the week. And then I just take them and I, I spritz them down with bleach and set them off to the side. So at the end of the day, it makes my cleanup process so much easier rather than um, having whatever, too many toys out. Um, again, the nice thing about this whole situation with COVID is that I'm learning new ways to have a more streamlined classroom. Now I'm gonna go grab those other bins. I'll be right back. Go. Okay, so this is the larger bin. As you can see, it's really deep. This is great when you know, we have our train pieces stored in here. You could store other things, obviously. And then they make these other really small bins here and they'll slide in and out if you just wanted to put like a couple of little toys in there. I like it so much better than those regular toy, toy organizers. Um, these are just so much better because they're just visually more appealing. I like to look around my classroom and have it be nice and calm. I'm one of those people who's like really affected by my environment. If it's disorganized outside of me, then I feel disorganized inside of me. So I like to have things organized. I love to have the toys sorted so we can just pull them out and look at different things and work on different activities. So uh, let's see, what else do I have here? So another thing that I have that I really, really love that works out really well for my classroom are these dish bins. I just picked these up from Walmart. I don't know, they are probably like five bucks or something like that. I like the larger ones. This one is... 18 quart. So I like these larger ones. I have used these in my program since I opened. I had a stack of them. Uh, I used to use them for storing toys, but now I use them more for moving dishes up and down the stairs. I don't have a kitchen space in my preschool classroom, so I have to have dishes go up and down the stairs. So rather than dragging dishes up and down the stairs after meals or whatever, I have two of these bins. One of the bins I use for dirty toys that the children have put in their mouth that I need to bleach before they go back into rotation. Right now I'm bleaching all of the toys, the toys at the end of the day. And if I were caring for infants um, who are putting mouth, their mouth and their, or their toys in their mouth when I used to care for infants, I used to bleach the toys every day then too. Um, I would just have less toys out. Uh, anyways, so I use one of these bins to bleach the toys and one of the bins to take all of our dirty dishes upstairs and down the stairs. Also, these bins are great for if you're like, sometimes I'll go through my classroom and I'm like, oh, I have all these random little things throughout the week that get, you know, pieces of toys that get, you know, like a, maybe a toy set or a game or whatever, all these little random pieces that get scattered around the room and the children are working. I can just keep one of those bins on the side and then I can collect all of the little things. And then I can, you know, at the end of the week or at the end of the month, I can go through and just find all the play sets that these things go to. I love to have my play sets organized because when we're working on a theme and when we're working on an activity or whatever, I just want to know where all the pieces to my play sets are. My toys are an investment for me. So I like to have them organized and to be able to pull them out for different activities. So these bins are really helpful for me. Another thing that I have in my classroom that I really love are all of these little clear containers here. So I'm just going to go through some of them. These I got from uh, from Michael's. I love them for storing glitter or, you know, just odds and ends for crafting. I also keep them in the kids kitchen area. Sometimes we put like rice or, you know, whatever little things inside of there, just sensory things. You could glue this lid on and it could be like, you know, put rice or pasta or, you know, noodles or what, I mean, um, lentils, whatever you have that you wanted to make for your little pretend kitchen. That's a lot of fun. Um, also use just teaching the kids how to open and close things and move their hands in opposite directions, putting things inside of there for observing. These are really great containers. I think it's like $5 for 12 of them. Of course, if you go to Michael's, you can always get the 50% off coupon. 
Michael's has, you know, those 50% off coupons all the time. So I usually will just like, if I'm zipping around and doing my goal, my chores, or my, my errands, and I'm like, oh, I had this thing or that thing. I'm a nut. I, I'm like cuckoo about my finances. Like I want the 50% off coupon. So I'll just pop in and pick up something. Uh, another thing they have are these little like condiment things from cost, or I'm sorry, from the dollar store. These are really great. I have a light table. We love to put things on the light table. You can use them for paint. You could use them for beads. You can use them for eyeballs, you know, whatever it is. If you just want to portion things out, another great thing for the kids to do with these is using a little pipette and squeezing different um, color water or just even transferring water from one container to the other. You could use one of these containers with different colored water. Actually, we might do that today. Different colored water into these for a little color mixing experiment. I mean, they're really great. And you get like 10 of them for a dollar, so they're 10 cents. I um, reuse my containers and I can, you know, sometimes I will even make an activity out of washing these out for the kids. I'll give them one of those bins that I just showed you, like one of these, one of these bins with some soapy water in it and a washcloth. That's another thing I use these bins for. So when I'm working with all the toddlers and, um, you know, they're at that stage where they're just going to get paint from everywhere from the table, the art table to the bathroom and they don't know how to wash their hands yet by themselves. I just put some warm sudsy water in here. I keep it up on the teacher counter until they're done painting. And then I put a little rag in there and they'll come over and then I'll just do a pre-wash of their hands. Of course, I take them in the bathroom and then we wash their hands the rest of the way. But this is a really great, easy way to get all that messy stuff off from those messy sensory activities before they go to the bathroom. Or like say, if I'm working with young children who might be mouthing the art supplies and I can't leave the table, I'm working by myself, I have that soapy water, I can just use the soapy water to kind of rinse them off and then they can go play. And then after everybody's finished, then we all go in the bathroom and wash our hands together. So these things are really super useful for that. Another thing that I have are these tiny little containers. These were actually, one of my family sent in some slime for the kids. Um, but I thought these would be really great. Again, this is a nice fine motor activity. Think about how hard a child has to concentrate to transfer liquid or, you know, anything from one container to the other. These are fun to put inside of rice bin or lentil bin or whatever it is that you want to do. Again, I like the fact that they're clear because we do a lot of things on the light table with fine motor activities. So we have these, these are from the dollar store. Um, I use these to make little terrariums and I use some succulents for them over the summer, but then I had a bunch of them left over. So these are really great for any kind of activity, oil and water or vinegar and salt and I'm, I'm sorry, vinegar and uh, baking soda, whatever you wanna do. Those are really fun for that. Another thing that we use that are free, baby food jars. Baby food jars are awesome for any kind of art activity. We put a little squirt of paint in there and we are good to go. So I love going to the dollar store and picking up all these little utensils. The dollar store by me had these tiny little utensils that work really well in our pretend kitchen, but it's also great for doing little relay races, balancing something on here, using it with a Play-Doh, flipping, you know, making imaginary pancakes or cookies or things like that. Uh, we had these little spatulas, so we use those for different activities. These ladles, again, this is another great fine motor activity, helping the children learn how to, you know, move their wrists and fingers at the same time to be able to carefully transfer um, liquid from one space to the other, or you could put a little ball in there, again, having relay races, or I don't know, there's just so many different things that you can use these ladles for. They're rubbery and they were a dollar, so they're pretty great. Another thing I like to use from the dollar store are these tweezers. Tweezers are, again, another way for you to be able to teach the children to be able to use their hands, to problem solve, and to be able to, um, you know, work with small objects. And these are a great size for the kids. Sometimes I use them in my kitchen. These are really great for, you know, if you're having a party or whatever, obviously put them in the dishwasher. <laughs> After the kids have been playing with them. Again, that's another nice thing about these is you can just toss them in the dishwasher and the kids are gonna, you know, they're gonna be able to be cleaned off that way. These right here are amazing for so many different things. You take the lid off and um, again, filling. We use them in the outdoor kitchen. And these were from the dollar store. I think it was like 50 cents each for one of these. Uh, it's a great way for them to work on that pitcher grip, work on squeezing and serving themselves. So we have 
These are um, actually, they're not ketchup and mustard. <laughs> well, no, I guess that wouldn't be the right color. But anyways, um, these are individual paints. So I use Discount School Supply for getting my gallon size paint. And I bought the pumps that go into the gallon size paint, but then they all crusted over and they were absolutely useless. So that was very frustrating. So I just went to the dollar store and I picked up a bunch of these. And now I have individual single serve paints for the kids. So what I do is, you know, you can take one of these small containers and have the kids put a little bit of paint in there, or we do larger mixing activities where we will take our big clear containers here and have the children um, serve their own paint. They loved this activity. So what we did is I set out an invitation to explore colors and color mixing. So the kids would use these little containers here and they would just squirt however much of whatever colors they wanted into these little containers and once it was full and they were tapped out then each child got to name their color and use it in the art station so that was a really fun and expensive activity for keeping them entertained uh let's see and the last thing i'm going to show you that i really love from the dollar store that we always have a lot of in our classroom are these funnels of varying different sizes. Funnels are awesome for me <laughs> as the teacher to be able to fill up these things because you know, whatever, and glue. Oh my gosh, we have so much glue. It's so hard to get the glue inside those little containers and then they crust over and then they don't glue and you know, whatever, that's always a problem. So at the beginning of uh, the school year, they always have glue for like 10 cents or whatever it is, or 50 cents or I don't know, whatever. They have Elmer's glue on sale and all those little containers. So I'll get all those little squeezy bottles and I buy a gallon of glue that I just keep on hand to keep refilling our containers. So funnels are really important for that. We also use funnels in all of our sensory activities. So whether it's peas or pasta or rice or water, whatever it is, we use these funnels for everything. Um. And I think that concludes my favorites that I had to share with you today. I love sharing content with teachers, with moms who are at home. I started my program 20 years ago because I wanted to be able to be home with my own children and I love working with children. I love supporting moms who are starting their own businesses. So if you have any questions, I've been doing this for 25 years. I have been, I've, I've always wanted to be a stay at home mom that gets paid really, really well to care for other people's children and you know to be able to be home i love being a homemaker i love having a beautiful space for children to come and learn and play so if you have any questions and there's any content that you'd like me to create feel free to drop me a line and i hope that you all have a fabulous day thanks for stopping by